Shalom, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praise, all honor, and all glory unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakak Wadash. Double honors to the head apostles, slash elder bishops of the great millstone who teach and who rule well. Peace, blessings, and safety to all you sincere. I can keep pushing, keep believing, and keep the faith, regardless of whether people hear or whether they forbear. All right, and uh, this lesson is pretty much going to be going into how you brothers that's in the truth, all right, if you ain't got no woman right about now, then don't stress it. Don't worry about it. All right, the Lord has got us covered, okay? And uh, what's sparking this lesson is that I was in a, um, I was on Facebook, and I was in some kind of comment board or something like that. I don't know how, but somebody posted a topic where they said uh, that the average uh, woman in Babylon the Great in America, all right, thinks that she's better than the average man, okay, and um, I, I replied back, and this is what I said, and I think that I hit the nail right on the head, you know, maybe you brothers um, may see things differently, or maybe you agree with me, but this is the reason why, okay, this is what I posted, I said, uh, women think that they are better than their male counterparts, which in this society they are, and that's because the roles have been changed, okay, and I'm speaking from a worldly point of view, all right, not a spiritually point of view, because, um, you know, according to Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, the, the head of the household is the man, all right, so a woman can never be higher up than a man, all right, the head of the household is the man, according to the Lord, that's First Corinthians, uh, the 11th chapter, I believe, but I said in this society they are, all right, in Esau society, Okay, why? Because the roles have been changed. All right, men bring protection and provisioning, and women uh, bring beauty and fertility, all right, femininity, etc. If men bring resources, but women have both resources and beauty, then that makes them believe that they are superior. The elites have done this on purpose as a part of population control. One thing that women can't bring, though, is protection. Soon, this society is going to collapse and with the collapse and threats of imminent danger around every corner, the tables will actually be flipped and women will be begging to get with any man because without one, they will not survive. OK, and um, that's what I what I responded back to that question. And uh, this is actually biblical. OK, this is actually biblical. I didn't go into it on the on that uh, Facebook post. All right. But this is actually biblical. This is exactly how it's going to happen. All right. As of right now. All right, uh, women are very arrogant, proud, you know, um, and why are they like that? Okay, once again, because the elites have set that up and set it up to be that way, all right, to where uh, women are held in a higher esteem, a higher regard in Babylon the Great in this society than men are, all right? And ultimately, the Lord is the one that has set it up that way, and it is a curse, all right, against the men of Jacob. And I'm going to read and go into it, and we're going to see why that is. All right, so I'm going to start off here in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 31 and verse 22. It says, how long wilt thou go about, O backsliding daughter? For the Lord hath created a new thing in the earth. A woman shall compass a man. Okay, all right, so the Lord, he's the one that has set up this order. All right, he's the one that set up an order. It says a woman shall compass a man. All right, she shall rise up above a man. See, in, in ancient societies, it was never that way. All right, for the most part, uh, women understood their role. All right, and you know, women have a wonderful role that the Most High has given them. You know, and uh, as the scriptures say, a woman is the glory of a man. You know, so they are, you know, valuable. All right, but at the same time, they are not to be uh, us not to usurp authority or to, be, or to be put over men. All right, <clears throat> especially when it comes. To, uh, to, you know, leadership and, and spiritual matters, all right? So, the Lord has done this as a punishment. Now, why did he do this? Okay, let's, let's go to the book of Jeremiah, chapter 6, and verse 2. All right, it says, I have likened the daughter of Zion to a comely and delicate woman. Okay, so pretty much the Heavenly Father, all right, he likens the daughter of Zion, which is the Israelites, all right, to a comely and delicate woman. He sees us as a beautiful woman that he was married to. And that's the reason why he's brought these curses upon us. Because what do we do? All right, let's go ahead and read about that in Jeremiah, the third chapter. Okay, and I'm going to start at verse 1. They say, if a man put away his wife 
and she go from him and become another man's, shall he return unto her again? Shall not that land be greatly polluted? But thou hast played the harlot with many lovers, yet return again to me, saith the Lord. Okay, and so uh, the comely and delicate daughter of Zion has committed spiritual adultery against the Heavenly Father, meaning that we have went and worshipped other, uh, you know, we worshipped false gods, okay, idols, all right. I was about to say uh, other gods, but the only true and living God is the Heavenly Father, okay. So, you know, we have worshipped um, idols, all right. So we played the harlot with many lovers, okay. It says, lift up thine eyes unto the high places and see where thou hast been lean with, been lying with, Salakia. In the ways thou hast thou sat for them as the Arabian in the wilderness, and thou hast polluted the polluted the land with thy whoredoms and with thy wickedness. Therefore the showers have been withholden, and there hath been no latter rain, and thou hast a force a so like thou hast a whore's forehead, thou refusest to be ashamed. Okay, so the Lord will send plagues against us. When we worship other gods, okay, the Lord sent plagues. Alright, once again, that's like enough to spiritual, you know, um, spiritual adultery all right it's just like if you have a beautiful woman and she and you find out that she's sleeping with other men behind your back you're not gonna be very happy about it okay it says what thou not from this time cry unto me my father thou art the god of my youth okay so when he when he brings those plagues what do we do we always you know um we always uh, cry out to the lord okay and and you know pretty much try to come back it's the same like once again imagine if you got a woman, you know, that's your glory, you know, and um, and she's out there messing around with a bunch of different men, you know, uh, and then every time, you know, they beat her up or, or things don't go right, she comes back to you. All right. You're going to look at her like like she's defiled. Right. You're gonna be like, oh, no, I don't I don't want to deal with you. All right. You you know, pretty much we only would go to the most high when we needed something. All right. Like imagine, you know, you have a woman that you're that you really love. And she pretty much just uses you, all right? She doesn't care about you. She only comes around when she needs something. But other than that, she's out messing with other dudes. Okay, that's pretty much what we did to the Heavenly Father, okay? Uh, Jeremiah 3 and 5. It's so like at 6. It's so like at 5, 5, 5. Jeremiah 3 and 5. Will he reserve his anger forever? Will he keep it to the end? Behold, thou hast spoken and done evil things as thou couldest. The Lord also said unto me in the days of Josiah the king, Hast thou seen that which backsliding Israel hath done? She has gone up upon every high mountain and under every green tree, and there hath played the harlot. And I said after her she had done all these things, turned thou unto me, but she returned not, and her treacherous Judah, so like her treacherous sister Judah saw it. And I saw when for all the causes whereby backsliding Israel committed adultery, I had put her away. And given her like given her a bill of divorce, yet her treacherous sister Judah feared not, but went and played the harlot also. Okay, so you know, um, uh, essentially, like you know, the Lord was married to to the daughter of Zion, but uh, you know, you have the southern and the northern kingdom. Okay, the northern kingdom fell into idolatry first. All right, and the southern kingdom uh, came later and, and and did this wickedness. So. Let's see. Uh, I'm gonna skip down Jeremiah three, and verse. Um, let's see. Let's see. Jeremiah three. Actually, no. I I'll continue on where I was at. Uh, so Jeremiah three and eight, and I saw also like I uh, three Jeremiah three and nine, and it came to pass through the lightness of her whoredom that she defiled the land and committed adultery with stones and with stocks, and yet for all this her treacherous sister Judah hath not turned unto me. With her whole heart, but faintly said the Lord, and the Lord said unto me, The backsliding Israel had justified herself more than her than treacherous Judah. Okay, so Judah saw what, what uh, Israel was doing, all right, what, what the northern kingdom was doing, and and continued on, all right, continued on doing the same wickedness. So, verse 12 Go and proclaim these words toward the north and say, Return thou backsliding Israel saith the Lord, and I will not cause mine anger to fall upon you, for I am merciful, saith the Lord, and I will not keep anger forever. Only acknowledge thine iniquity, that thou hast transgressed against the Lord thy God, and hast scattered thy ways to the strangers under every green tree, and ye have not obeyed my voice, saith the Lord. So the Lord is like, like imagine, like I said, imagine you got a woman, and you tell her, where well, you know, I know you've been out there messing around, but 
Just admit to your wrongdoing, apologize, and stop doing it, and I'll let you come back, all right? And we can be together. That's pretty much what the Lord said to us. But we was like, nah, we're not going to do that, all right? Turn, O backsliding children, saith the Lord, for I am married unto you, and I will take you one of a city and two of a family, and I will bring you to Zion, all right? And I will give you pastors according to mine heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. Now, this is this is happening now, okay? This is the return. When he says, I will take you two of a family, all right, and one of a city, okay, that's that's going into the remnant, okay, the elect, okay, that, that small remainder that is returning back to the Lord and is going to be joined unto him in that new covenant under Yahweh Shai, okay? So then it kind of goes into the deliverance of Jacob after that, all right? But that's the, ultimately, that's the reason why the Lord, all right, put these curses upon our people, all right, upon the men because, you know, we uh we were disobedient and went up against the Heavenly Father, so he said, I'm going to make your women be disobedient and go up the, against the Heavenly Father. Um, so like he, he said, okay, let me let me rephrase that. I don't know. My mind is all over the place. Okay. We went up against the Heavenly Father. So he said, I'm going to make your women go up against you. All right. So you know how it feels. Okay. That's pretty much why we are in the condition that we're in now with the relations between men and women in Babylon the Great. And it's all a part of our, our punishment. Okay. It's a part of our discipline, our chastening. All right. And the Lord taking that curse off up off of us is going to be part of our reward. All right. Let's get this. Once again, this is all part of the curses. OK, all even goes back to Deuteronomy chapter 28. OK, Deuteronomy 28 and 56, it says the tender and delicate woman among you, which would not adventure to set the sole of her foot upon the ground for delicateness and tenderness. Her eyes shall be evil toward the husband of her bosom and toward her son and toward her daughter okay and the the, the so-called black woman all right you know you have a few that that are that are right but for the most part okay the so-called black woman and the so-called black man are pretty much enemies in babylon the great all right um they have fully taken on the ways of esau for the most part and pretty much follow behind his pernicious ways all right feminism you know you got a lot of these black women supporting the um alphabet community I mean, all these different things. All right. While you have the the and the men are the men are, are going off as well. All right. But, you know, we don't we don't care about the men. I'm talking about the women here because the women are our glory. The two third uh, men, you know, they're going to perish. All right. And most of the women are going to perish as well. But, you know, once again, this is all part of the punishment, because here in Babylon, the great. All right. When you do when you do good onto a woman, you know, for the most part, it actually turns them off. OK. And once again, the reason why the Lord is doing that is it's like um, it is pretty much him showing us what he what he was feeling. All right. Because it's the same way the Lord would do good unto us. And what would we do? We would go out there and commit spiritual adultery. All right. We would worship idols. OK, so now once again, he, he has this, he has our women doing the exact same thing to us that we did to him. All right. But here's where the silver lining is at. OK, as as the world comes to a close. All right. The Lord is getting ready to flip all of this in the time of Jacob's trouble. All right. Which is the reason why, you know, in that original um, the original reply that I wrote on that comment board. OK. I said that the one thing that women can't bring is protection. And soon this society is going to collapse. And with the collapse and threats of imminent danger around every corner, the tables will actually be flipped and women will be begging to get with any man because without one, they will not survive. Okay, so right now the Lord has got him in a trick bag, all right? He's got it to where pretty much, you know, there's, there is an illusion of safety, all right, in this society, and it's caused uh, the women to think that they really don't need men, all right, that, that uh, you know, to become arrogant, prideful, all right? And see, the Lord, he's got him in a trick bag, man. He's about to, he's about to flip the whole script on them. I'm going to start with Isaiah, the third chapter, to get that right quick. This is Isaiah chapter 3 and verse um, 16. It says, Moreover, the Lord saith, because the daughters of Zion are haughty and walk with stretched forth necks and wanton eyes, walking and mincing as they go and making a tinkling with their feet. All right. So that promiscuous kind of look, you know, um, I can't really describe it, but arrogant, cocky, you know, that, that Megan Thee Stallion spirit, that Cardi B spirit, that sexy red, that Sukihana spirit. Okay. Therefore, the Lord will smite with a scab the crown of the head of the daughters of Zion 
and the Lord will discover their secret parts. In that day, the Lord will take away the bravery of their tinkling ornaments about their feet and their cowls and their round tires like the moon, the chains and the bracelets and the mufflers, the bonnets and the ornaments of the legs and the headbands and the tablets and the earrings, the rings and nose jewels, the changing suits of the changeable suits of apparel and the mantles and the wimples and the crisping pins, the glasses and the fine linen and the hoods and the veils, and it shall come to pass that instead of sweet smell there shall be stink, and instead of a girdle, a rent, okay, and uh, a girdle um, used to be what, what women would wear, and it would kind of shape their body and make them, um, like give you that hourglass figure, all right, but instead of that, a rent, meaning they're going to be, um, you know, shaped oddly, all right, and instead of well-set hair, baldness, and instead of a stomacher, a girding of sackcloth, and instead of, and burning instead of beauty, all right, and thy men shall fall by the sword, and thy mighty in war, okay, so of course the men are not going to escape either, but the Lord is going to put all these curses upon the daughter of Zion, because the daughters of Zion, because as of right now, okay, they're, they're haughty, all right, they're walking around very arrogantly, very proud, you know, and the Lord, he, he's not with that, so he said, I'm going to bring that great destruction, let's, uh, let's go to the book of Isaiah chapter 13, okay, Isaiah chapter 13 and verse 11 is where I'm going to start. All right, the Lord says, and I will punish the world for their evil and the wicked for their iniquity. And I will cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease and will lay low the haughtiness of the terrible. OK, and that's really Esau. But, you know, um, Esau has enabled um, the, 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 you know, Jake's women. All right. The so-called Negro, Latino and Native American Indian women to be arrogant, to be proud, to be haughty. All right. And they're going to be brought low right along with Esau. It says, and I will make a man more precious than fine gold. Even a man than the golden wedge of Ophir. Okay. So he says, I'm going to make a man more precious than fine gold. Okay. It says, therefore, I will shake the heavens and the earth shall remove out of her place in the wrath of the Lord of hosts and in the day of his fierce anger. And it shall be as a chaste roe and as a sheep that no man taketh up. They shall every man turn to his own people and flee everyone to his own land. And everyone that is found shall be thrust through. And everyone that is joined unto them shall fall by the sword. Okay. The children also shall be dashed to pieces before their eyes. Their houses shall be spoiled and their wives ravished. Okay. So women are going to be uh, pretty much being victimized out here, man. All right. That's how it's going to go down. And once again, in that day, a man is going to be more precious than fine gold. But not just any man. All right. A man that's of the elect. Okay. Because once again, without a man that's of the elect, that's being protected by the angels, you're not going to make it. This is chap uh, Micah chapter 7 and verse 10. Then she that is mine enemy shall see it, and shame shall cover her, which said unto me, Where is the Lord thy power? Mine eye shall behold her. Now shall she be trodden down as the mire of the streets. Okay, so if you're, you know, if you're uh, the women, that's another thing too. A lot of these women are enemies to the truth. All right, they they hate the Hebrew Israelites. Okay, they don't want to hear nothing to do with the laws of the Lord. And once again, see the reason why that is because let's keep it let's keep it a buck. All right, sin feels good. Okay, living a life of sin and feeding the flesh it feels good. But the scriptures say that uh, she that liveth in pleasure is dead while she liveth. All right, she's spiritually dead, and the Lord is going to manifest that into the physical. Okay, so these women that are, you know, these wicked women, the only fans and you know, whores and all this kind of stuff that, you know, the arrogance, the pride, all that's going to be laid low. All right. And a lot of these women, you're going to be seeing them getting stumped out, you know, uh, taken by force. Okay. You know, group, uh, groups of men are be grabbing women up and doing what they want to do with them. And the only way that they'll be able to escape that is a man of the Lord. That's the reason why, once again, as we read, okay, that I will make a man more precious than fine gold. Okay. Because the Lord is going to bring great evils against them. All right. Once again, right now they're very arrogant, but all that is getting ready to change very, very soon. Okay. Let's get uh Second Ezra's chapter sixteen. All right, Second Ezra chapter sixteen, and I'm gonna start. I'm just gonna get thirty three and thirty four. Okay, that's another thing too. See, a lot of men <clears throat> on earth are gonna die. Okay, the vast majority of men are gonna die. Uh, you know these women, they're gonna be widows and. You know, there's not going to be men around to marry the women and all that. So it's going to be a shortage of men. And then the men that do survive, okay, 
you know, it's either going to be because they're either of the elect or the Lord has allowed them to survive so that they could be spirits that are created for vengeance. Okay. This is second Ezra chapter 16 and verse 33. It says the virgins shall mourn having no bridegrooms. The women shall mourn having no husbands. Their daughters shall mourn having no helpers. In the wars shall their bridegrooms be destroyed. All right, World War III, the race wars, the class wars, the civil wars. Okay. In the wars shall their bridegrooms be destroyed and their husbands shall perish of famine. Okay. So a lot of these women, you know, even if you do have a husband right about now, okay, most likely he's not going to make it unless he's a man of the Lord. All right. He's not going to make it. He's going to get deleted and then you're going to be out there to fend for yourself. All right. Well, let's see what it says. Let's go to Isaiah, the 32nd chapter. Okay. This is Isaiah chapter 32 and verse 1. Behold, a king shall reign in righteousness, and princes shall rule in judgment. Okay. And that king is Yahweh Shai, who the word literally calls Jesus. And those princes are the 144,000, all right, the men of the elect. And a man shall be as in hiding place from the, from the wind, and a covert from the tempest, okay, as rivers of, a, of water in a dry place as the shadow of a great rock in a weary land, okay? So a man shall be as a hiding place from the wind. He's going to be protection. And a covert from the tempest. The tempest is a mighty storm. So a man is going to be a covering from that great storm. As rivers of water in a dry place, okay? If you're out in the desert and you're, you're dying of thirst and you come across a, a body of water, you know, you're going to be like, you're going to freak. You're going to be so excited, so happy. You're going to be running it down, chasing it down, all right, R rushing to just jump in the water, get get a get a drink, you know, that's how it's gonna feel. That's how that's how the Lord is gonna flip the situation. Okay, it says as the shadow of a great rock in a weary land. Okay, it says and the eyes of them that see shall not be dim, and the ears of them that hear shall hearken. Okay, so th those that are of the elect, before this time comes, they're gonna be returning back to this knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. The heart also of the rash shall understand knowledge. And the tongue of the stammerer shall be ready to speak plainly. All right, so the Lord is perfecting his saints through his knowledge, wisdom, understanding. And I'm going to skip down to um, verse 9, Isaiah 32 and 9. Rise up, ye women that are at ease. Hear my voice, ye careless daughters. Give ear unto my speech. Many days and years shall ye be troubled, ye careless women. For the vintage shall fail, the gathering shall not come. So your food stamps, your, your Section 8 housing, your fan, you know, or if you're not on that, you got a fancy career. Okay, what's going to happen? All that is going to be shut down, okay? Because once again, in this society, you know, you're able to skate by, you know, um, with, with, you know, finances and all that. But this this uh, monetary system is getting ready to collapse, okay? And then Esau is going to bring out that, that RFID microchip, all right, the, the mark of the beast. And, you know, if you don't take it, you're going to be pretty much trodden down. But if you... If you do take it, I mean, so like, yeah, if, if you if you don't take it, you're going to be uh, suffering and on the streets for the most part, okay? But the elect is going to remain strong and not take it. But if you do end up taking that chip because you want to save your life, you want to still continue to be a part of Babylon, all right, you're going to end up like Lot's wife, okay? You're going to be destroyed, okay? Um, but anyways, so, you know, it says, uh, rise up, ye careless women, okay? Because in, in, in America... All right, this is this place allows people, period, to just do wickedness, to live in wickedness. All right, and the thing about it is that, um, you know, if you're a beautiful woman, you're pretty much on top of the world. And, you know, it, it, that's the reason why the truth is mostly men, okay, because sin and temptation is much uh, harder. It's much harder for a woman to walk away from the world because you have the world constantly chasing that after you. If you're if you're a beautiful woman, you have men throwing themselves, you know, 100 dudes on Instagram throwing themselves at you, you know, um, getting hit on all the time. And you have a, pl a, pl a plethora of men to choose from, you know, so it, it, it affords you that that uh, luxury of being picky, you know, arrogant, cocky and all that kind of stuff, which I know not all women are like that. But for the most part, that's what we see. That's the reason why you have men here in America. They, they feel like they have to leave uh, the United States just to be able to go and, and get. A woman that is that is marriageable, all right, that's able to be a wife. And that's pretty sad, but, you know, Esau has set it up this way on purpose, okay? And he's constantly uh, setting enmity between the man and the woman, all right, and trying to pretty much uh, tell them that, you know, with the feminism stuff, that they are not only equal to but better than men, 
All right, and that's going to cause that's that's a direct contradiction with the way that the heavenly Father has ordained things to be, and it's only going to cause chaos in relationships, and that's exactly what we see. I mean, what do we see? Like a like a a sixty or seventy percent divorce rate in America. All right, eighty percent of the time it's 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 initiated by the woman. Okay, see, it's not going to be like that in that in that day, and it's not it, it wouldn't be like that if a wicked ruler was not ruling the earth. Okay, because the heavenly Father is pro family. All right, the Heavenly Father wants men and women to be together. All right, he said, what, what was the, one of the first commandments? He said, be fruitful and multiply. All right. But anyways, continuing on, okay, it says, Tremble ye women that are at ease, be troubled, ye careless ones. Strip you and make you bare, and gird sackcloth upon your loins. Okay. They shall lament for the teats, for the pleasant fields, for the fruitful vine. All right. It says, upon the land of my people shall come up thorns and briars, yea, upon all the houses of joy in the joyous city. All right. So it just kind of goes into um, pretty much, you know, as I said before, all right, it goes into that, that judgment that's getting ready to come. But a man shall be, you know, as a hiding place. All right. A man shall be as a place of safety in that day. All right. Because it's going gonna, it's gonna to get like that. All right. It's going to be bad. And when that happens... Okay, when that happens, let's see how are the women going to react. Isaiah chapter four and verse one. And in that day, seven women shall take hold of one man, saying, we will eat our own bread and wear our own apparel. Only let us be called by thy name to take away our reproach. And that day shall the branch of the Lord be beautiful and glorious. And the fruit of the earth shall be excellent and comely for them that are escaped of Israel. So this is not OK. This is a future end time prophecy because, I, you know, I um. Women always get pissed off when the scripture comes out. They say, oh, that's, that's past already. That's talking about the judgment uh, that happened to Jerusalem back then. Okay, but no. All right. It's talking about the remnant. Okay, those that are escaped. All right, the remnant. And we're going to read on down and we'll be able to see that as well. But I'm going to read that again. Isaiah 4 and 1. And in that day, seven women. Okay, could be could be seven, could be more. That number seven is just a number of completion. Could be a hundred. And that day seven women shall take hold of one man, saying, We will eat our own bread and wear our own apparel. Only let us be called by thy name to take away our reproach. Okay, because ain't going to be no men around really like that. And the ones that are around are going to be pretty much wicked as all hell, you know, and, and beating them, treating them like crap, doing all kind of things. You know, they're going to be trodden down. All right, barely surviving. So if they come across a man of the Lord, all right, they're going to be, it's going to be an honor to be one of their wives in that day. All right, not only that, but you got the truth, okay? The men of the Lord are, are you know, Lord's will be that number, will be uh, the, the new rulers over the kingdom of heaven, okay? Under Yahweh Shai, all right? King David, the 144,000, the men on down. So it says, and, and in that day shall the branch of the Lord be beautiful and glorious. So the Lord calls this beautiful and glorious. That's another thing that Esau does. Esau... Uh, has made uh, women to believe that if you have another woman that you are uh, doing her wrong in some kind of way. But that's not what the scriptures say. All right. Now, in this time, it's not expedient. OK, meaning it's not convenient. It's not wise to do so, because in Babylon, the great, you know, um, people are full of diseases and it's all kind of different stuff. And women are very chaotic, man. You know, if you have a, if you do have a good one, then hey, you know, big ups to you, blessings to you, you know, but. For the most part, most brothers can't even really handle one woman, okay, let alone two, three, however many, right? So, you know, it's not wicked to do that, you know, but at the same time, it's just not expedient, okay? But in that time, you know, when this society falls and the children of Israel, the elect specifically, are, are raised up, lifted up, then it's going to be a whole different, you know, world. And, you know, we're going to be, we're going to be in the kingdom, all right? We're going to be rulers and princes and priests and kings so we'll have servants and subjects and, and handmaids and all that. So it won't be the same as it is now. All right. But this is going to take effect even before then. All right. Once again, during the time of Jacob's trouble. OK. And it shall, I'm going to read that again. Isaiah 4 and 3. And it shall come to pass. All right. Actually, 2. In that day shall the branch of the Lord be beautiful and glorious. And the fruit of the earth shall be excellent and comely for them that are escaped of Israel. And it shall come to pass that he that is left in Zion and he that remaineth in Jerusalem shall be called holy, even every one that is written among the living in Jerusalem. 
when the Lord hath washed away the filth of the daughters of Zion, and shall have purged the blood of Jerusalem from the midst thereof by the spirit of judgment and by the spirit of burning. Okay, so going through that spiritual fire, that's how you know, all right, that's how you know that this is speaking of uh, end time, okay, because the children of Israel are not going to be uh, washed clean fully until the Lord comes, all right, until they're translated, all right, and they are, and they are, um, they, they, they take off the corruptible and put on the incorruptible, you know, which it's starting to happen little by little with this word, okay, as it says in John 15 and 3, you are now made clean by the words which I have spoken unto you, all right, but, you know, um, it's gonna, it's coming through, through that spiritual fire, okay, so that's how you know that this is speaking of the end time, it's not talking about a time that, that happened before already, because the children of Israel are still in wickedness till today, all right, but this says that he's going to wash away the filth from the daughters of Zion, all right, let's get a few more scriptures and I'll get ready to close out, this is Isaiah chapter 60, and I'm going to go down to verse um, 21, it says, thy people shall be all righteous, they shall inherit the Lord the land forever, the branch of my planting, the work of my hands, that I may be glorified. And a little one shall become a thousand, and a small one a strong nation. I, the Lord, will hasten it in his time. Okay? Alright, so a little one shall become a thousand, and a, and a small one a strong nation. Okay, why is that? Because the remnant is going to take, you know, their women, and they're going to enter into them, and they're going to conceive and bear forth children. This is how the two thirds are going to come back. Okay, so that's a part of the um, that's a part of the the blessing and the reward that the elect men are going to receive for remaining faithful to Yahweh Shai. He's going to take that curse up off of you know the relationship between the man and the woman. They're going to be joined back together again, and they're not going to be thinking about you being with another woman. They're just going to be happy to be alive. They're going to be happy that 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 they were chosen by you. Okay. And they're going to see you in your glory, in your power. Hell, even now, Jake being at the bottom of society, okay, women still desire us of all nations, man. All right, the heathen women and our own women, they, you know, they still want to be with us. They just, they just don't want to come correct, all right? And a man of the Lord really doesn't have time to be dealing with a cantankerous woman, all right, a boisterous woman. Okay, we're too focused on, on serving Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. Okay, but in this day, once again, a little one shall become a thousand, okay, when they reproduce. And a small one, a strong nation, I, the Lord, will hasten it in his time, okay? And uh, Yahweh Shai kind of briefly touched on this, all right, in the book of uh, Mark chapter 10. All right, Mark chapter 10 and verse uh, about 28, okay? It says, And then Peter began to say unto him, Lo, we have left all and have followed thee. All right, he's saying this to Yahweh Shai. And Yahweh Shai answered and said, Verily I say unto you, there is no man that hath left house, or brethren, or sisters, or father, or mother, or wife, or children, or lands for my sake, and the gospels. But he shall receive, all right, but he shall receive an hundredfold now in this time, houses, and brethren, and sisters, and mothers, and children, and lands with persecutions, and in the world to come eternal life, okay? So... Says everything that you gave up, you're gonna receive a hundredfold, okay, in the world to come. So that's a that's a beautiful thing. And I'm gonna close out with this. All right, Psalms chapter 128. All right, and it tells you for the remnant, okay, that thy wife shall be as a fruitful vine by the side of thine house. Let's go ahead and read it. Psalms 128 and one. Blessed is every one that feareth the Lord, that walketh in his ways. For thou shalt eat the labor of thine hands. Happy shalt thou be, and it shall be well with thee. Thy wife shall be as a fruitful vine by the sides of thine house, thy children like olive plants round about thy table. Behold, that thus shall the man be blessed that feareth the Lord. The Lord shall bless thee out of Zion, and thou shalt see the good of, of Jerusalem all the days of thy life. Yea, thou shalt see thy children's children, and peace upon Israel. Okay, so there you go. All right, you're going to see thy children's children, meaning many generations. You're going to be just like the forefathers, okay? Yeah, the founding fathers of, of this wicked, sinful kingdom. You know, Lord's will be those men that are the founding fathers of Yasharala. All right, the sons of God, the princes of the power, okay? But um, it says that thy wife should be as a fruitful vine. And that's another thing. See, one of the curses 
also is uh, women uh, ha bearing children in pain. It's not going to be that way anymore. So we don't know exactly how it's going to be, like if it still be nine months and all that kind of stuff. But, uh, you know, we know that, that our, our wives will be able to bear children to us. <clears throat> Salaki, okay? Uh, but anyways, that being said, all right, Lord's will was edifying and uplifting, all right, to the brothers, you know. Um, if you don't have a woman, don't stress about it because the Lord is going to, you know, he's going to uh, deliver that for you, all right, in the time to come, all right? So there's no need to worry. You know, everything that we desire is going to be there in the kingdom. Right now, just seek the kingdom first and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and close out. All praise, all honor, and all glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rakakodash. Double honors to the head apostles slash elder bishops of the great millstone who teach and who rule well. Peace, blessings, and safety to all you sincere Akim. Keep pushing, keep believing, and keep the faith, regardless whether people hear or whether they forbear. Shalom.